Welcome to Rockstyle Productions, where in this episode we are going to test out the Hyperkin Retron 77 clone system designed to play Atari 2600 games. Stay tuned! Hey everyone, Gary here with Rockstyle Productions. Before we dive into today's episode, I just want to take a second and say thank you for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here today with the Retron 77. I really do appreciate it. And a special thanks goes out to John Early, supporter of the channel, who actually requested that we review this console. Now, if you like what you see here, I invite you to check out some of the other videos that we have here on the channel, including our original unboxing of the Retron 77. That's where we go into all the details as far as how it comes out of the box, some of the features, cartridge fitment, so on and so forth. That's not gonna be covered here. This is strictly going to be, how does it play? And if you do like what you see here, I invite you, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and hit that bell notification. That way each and every time we upload new content, you are kept the most up to date. And what I wanna know from you here today, the Atari 2600, which this system emulates, was insanely popular in the early 80s. Did you ever have one? I had two or three, I wanna say. We had an actual Atari one, we had one of the Sears ones, and I think we may have had a second Sears one as well. We never had the scaled down version, the junior version. We never had the Vader. Every one that we had was either the Sears version or the original Atari 2600 from Atari themselves. So early in summer 2020, like I mentioned, John Early requested that we review this. We did the unboxing in September. What's taking so long with this review? Well, one thing I do want to get out of the way here is the fact that this is the third Retron 77 we have used to try to get this review done. The original one that we used in the unboxing worked for 15, 20 minutes, stopped working. Went to Adrian at Live Action Games where we bought this system at, he exchanged it out for me. Second unit, dead out of the box. Well, for two. So I sent that unit back to them in early October 2020. Here it is, the middle of December, and we finally have this unit back. Initially, this one was dead out of the box. Going through it, trying some things out, what I ended up doing to get it working is I went to Hyperkin's website and I downloaded the latest firmware. From there, this has worked so far. Now, one thing about this system is it does have an SD card slot on the back of it, micro SD card that is, and you can actually load and run ROMs right off of the system. There is a homebrew community really dedicated towards this system that can do things like eliminate the number of ROM limitations that this system has out of the box. After I get done with this review, I may do that, but the way that this has gone, I don't have confidence right now that I can go ahead and put any of those community builds on here and have it work properly. It's, and I'm sorry to say Hyperkin, but having to go through three of these to get a working unit, and actually this one when I got it, the fact it wasn't working until I updated the firmware on it, like I wasn't getting anything whatsoever. But now I am. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna hook this up and we are gonna test it out with several games. And in addition to the controller that it comes with, which I mean, this is pretty much an Atari 2600 clone controller with hyperkin aesthetics with the dog ears and everything on here. We do have one of Atari's own Ranger controllers that we will be testing out here as well. Now, the neat thing about this controller is it actually kind of takes a modern aesthetic for an Atari 2600 controller, so you hold it almost like an NES or Super NES controller, but it also has a dial up top so you can use it like one of the paddles, so you don't need to have the separate paddle controllers for those type of games. And yes, we will be testing out a paddle game here. It's time to get started. We have seven games we're gonna try out. We've got Pitfall, The Empire Strikes Back, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Pac-Man, Night Driver, and this one down below here with no label on it. Yes, we are going to play E.T. Let's get started. So we're gonna start out with the stock controller here and just looking at the default menu system that you have on here. This is what pops up basically if you don't have any cartridge installed. So you can view the license for the software that they utilize. You also have one, two, three, four different homebrew games on here. So we're gonna go to Baby first. 
And it's kind of neat. These are all pre-installed for you. So this is baby. I don't know what, if it's like one of those where I'm just trying to get across without getting hit. I guess that's what it is. Very rudimentary in its design. So next up is Muncher 77. And this is almost like a, um, like a kicks or a snake. Oh, we pretty much are trying to avoid whatever that devil is. So pretty, I mean, pretty simplistic game. Now here we have Astron. I have no idea. Got me, I don't, left and right are the only thing that do anything, but okay. Now here is Nexion 3D. I think this is supposed to be like a uh, maze runner. Okay, I think. All right, so if you look on the bottom, that's where your guy is. So now I can go up. I need to avoid those guys. Eh. But now let's get to the games that I actually know about because I used to own them and I've played them before, like Pitfall. Now, one thing I just noticed is that I do have it set in 16 by nine. Uh, we will change that here before the next game. 16 by nine on this, on at least this doesn't bother me. Now, I will say that as oh, someone who sucks at this game, um, as someone who I had this, it's been 20 plus years since I've played it. Um, I mean, it looks and sounds good to me. I mean, this is very typical of what I would have expected or, or remembered that it would have looked like back on my Atari 2600. So, I mean, Pitfall is looking and playing as it should. Let's move on to one of my favorite games for the Atari 2600, The Empire Strikes Back. So in addition to changing games, I've also changed controllers. This is the Ranger uh, that we are playing with here. And if you've also noticed, I've, I've changed the aspect ratio to four by three as it should be. Got it. Now, I don't know why the, the lines and everything are showing up on the left-hand side of the screen. Got another one. I played so much of this game back in the day. As you get hit in this game too, what happens is your, your snow speeder changes colors. Now, if you want to repair your snow speeder, you can one time land, I think it's only one time, land and, and basically get back to full health. All right, got another one. I mean, overall, this is pretty much as I remember. Um, and it gets just progressively harder as more and more ad -ats or Imperial Walkers, if you prefer, come after you. And the spacing between the ad -ats tightens up over time as well. Um, yeah, something different with the, uh, with the Ranger controller for sure. Let's move on to our next game. During the 80s, there wasn't a bigger video game than Pac-Man. I mean, it had its own cartoon, its own cereal. It was everywhere. And one of the reasons that it was so popular was the fact it was also one of the first games that you could really get an arcade port at home. Well, this is not a very accurate arcade port, I'll tell you that first and foremost. You either love the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man or you don't. I'm, I am not a huge fan of it, I will admit that right now. Um, it plays okay, but not great. Now, one thing I will say using the Ranger compared to the stock controller, the stock controller I was definitely feeling, uh, when I had been playing this earlier today, I was feeling some definite lag and I couldn't make really precise moves. Um, the, the Ranger feels a hell of a lot better. Like, I had almost thought that the, uh, the stock controller uh, was broken, quite honestly, as, you know, like I could not just press down and go into a tunnel like that. It wasn't working correctly. Uh, this is working flawlessly. I'm, I'm actually liking this quite a bit. The Atari 2600 was still very much in a time period where, you know, playing video games, you used your imagination. Um, and here you can see it's really the same level over and over and over and over again. Um, I do like the Ranger controller better than the stock one, at least for 
for Pac-Man. Uh, this is allowing me to make more precise moves except for right there where I went right into one of the ghosts. One thing I know a lot of people will say, why don't you just emulate? Use a RetroPie. Um, with something like emulation and RetroPies, it requires you to use, um, you know, downloaded uh, software. Basically, it's promoting piracy. I would rather use something like this where I'm still using actual physical cartridges that I own versus, you know, pirating stuff off the internet. I, and I know some people may not like that, but I mean, that's what it is. If you're downloading ROMs off the internet, it is piracy. And we have completed yet another board. Now we are going to move on to our next game. Nintendo on Atari. Nintendo on Nintar Atari. Nintari, I almost call it. Um, and there are rumors, well not rumors, it basically was going to happen that the NES uh, was originally going to be brought into the U.S. By Atari. Oh, I thought I had it cleared. Now, one thing I will say that is kind of a bummer is it doesn't seem like the system remembers the aspect ratio that I selected. So, for example, I have to go through and select four by three for my aspect ratio each and every time. Wow. I thought I was clear there. I guess I wasn't. I played so much of this as a kid. I mean, this is one of the games I remember having. Uh, for my Atari 2600. Now one of the interesting things too is the fact that there was no pause or start button on the controllers for the 2600 so a lot of times to start a game you actually hit the reset button. Um, Donkey Kong you just hit the uh, the action button. Wow I almost got hit there. I at least want to get to the second level to show you all what the second level looks like. The action button that starts each level off. Ah, those little torch or lanterns or whatever they are. They are a pain. Now, and I will say too, the Ranger controller, very similar to like what the Scout and the Cadet have, where it has kind of humps built in the back, makes it super comfortable to hold. All right, we should have it here. And then this only has two boards, so it kicks you right back to the main one. So this is Donkey Kong. Let's fire up Donkey Kong Jr. Now one thing I still need to do here is hit the aspect ratio switch. And this is one of those, I think the reset button starts it. This is just so primitive compared to the NES version. It looks like the Simpsons versions of Chewbacca to me. Oh, that's right, I can't go that far as DK Jr. looks like he's humping the pole. Again, I, I am really digging the, uh, the Ranger controller here. Got through the first level there, finally. Took me long enough, didn't it? Now with this, what you have to do basically is push the keys all the way up. <gasps> oh, I didn't mean to fall! And that's game over. But this is a pretty accurate version of Donkey Kong Jr. for the time, for considering what the system did, not too shabby. Now I want to try a paddle game. This is actually one that I had back in the day. We're going to try Night Driver. So Night Driving is a game I actually had back, I think I got it for Christmas for my grandmother in 1983. Um, it's one of those where it's a racing game, and I've always loved racing games. So let's see here. I don't remember. Do I hit the reset button on this? Yeah, this is definitely weird. It's almost like, so for me, it's almost like RC driving because of the, just the way that the control is. Although typically with RC driving, I'm using left finger for throttle and right hand is uh, the steering wheel. Again, I don't know why I have those, uh, the things that are on the left hand side of the screen. And I, it has been far too long since I've played this. I also wish that the travel were less basically had in the RC world we call exponential. So basically I'm kind of wishing it was just this kind of motion to go left and right versus like I'm having to move it quite a bit to get it to turn as time has expired. Um, it's tough like I remember it and this did work. Now what we're going to do is we are going to try one of the most infamous games ever for the Atari 2600. 
And one of the things I want to try with it is the connector for Atari was actually the same as the Sega Master System and the Sega Genesis. We're going to try our Master System controller just to see if it works on E.T. So here we have our Sega Master System controller. And it's working. Left, right, up, down. So it says go to the left. Get a Reese's Pieces or whatever that is. Uh oh, got to get away from the dude. That sucked. I mean, I just went onto another board and I landed. See, this is one of the things about this game. Ah! This is what frustrated people is these damn pits. If you notice too, there were some graphical glitches where E.T. was landing in, like actually in the black stuff. Uh, but this is E.T., definitely a challenging game. We just got a piece of the phone. Let's wrap it up. So in the end, what do I think of this system? What do I think of the Retron 77? Well, there's a couple things with Atari collecting in general and with this system specifically. First and foremost, Atari collecting, pretty darn cheap. The demand just isn't there anymore. People don't have the affinity for the Atari 2600 that they do for like the NES or the Super NES where you get super stupid and expensive games. Now you can still find expensive games for the 2600, but there aren't as many of them. Uh, also, because the games are 40 years old, a lot of times you can have cartridges that you pick up that just don't work. I've got three examples right here that kind of bum me out. I have Popeye, which I was really looking forward to. I've got the Death Star Attack from Star Wars Return of the Jedi, and perhaps my favorite game on the system, Zaxxon. None of them worked. Tried Bright Boy, tried 1UP Cleaning Cards, tried everything I could think of. They were just dead. And over time, that's going to happen. Other games that you see here, like Donkey Kong Jr. did not work out of the box. I had to bright boy it, I had to use my 1UP cleaning cards. So that is something to be aware of with collecting for the Atari 2600. I also just don't have the passion myself for the 2600 as like a Metal Jesus Rocks or Adam Korlick. Check both of those guys out too. They both love the Atari 2600. Like I mentioned in the intro, I had them, but I just never had the passion for it. I fell in love with video gaming in the arcades and with my NES. The Atari 2600 was just there, for lack of a better words. Now, as far as the Retron 77 goes, it's a neat device. I don't understand why I ran into the issues that I did with three separate units. The first two that basically I had to send back or return, and this third one that we have here that I had to flash new firmware to. That's something that should be taken care of from the factory. I will also say that I felt the gameplay was better overall when I used the Ranger controller versus the stock controller that the system comes with. I did not care, especially on Pac-Man is where I noticed it the most, that this was a hell of a lot more precise than what I was running into on Pac-Man. And yes, it is cool that you can still use Genesis and Master System controllers with this system. Some of the other features on here that kind of leave me scratching my head. The 4x3, 16x9 button. Why that's not a switch, I'm guessing is because of the software that they're using to actually dump the ROM from the cartridge and play it. You're actually not playing the cartridge, you're dumping the ROM from the cartridge and then playing it on the system. Very similar to what their Retron 5 uses. Um, and I don't know if it's because of that, that it doesn't store your um, aspect ratio as a preference on the system or what. There are other features on here that, like I just, they don't do anything for me. The frag button. And what that is on the original Atari 2600, if you wiggle the cartridge just right or, or putzed around with the power switch, you could cause glitches in the system. Yeah, not something that appeals to me. I am, if anything, the, pro, the typical customer for something like this. I played it, I know it, I don't want to buy an original because I have no way to really connect it to my flat panel TV and have it look decent. 
Um, this looks good, it sounds good, it does a good job of emulation. I've not run into any of the games that I have that don't play for reasons other than the cartridges no longer work. The three that I showed you, tried on actual hardware, didn't work on that either. So it is not the system. Now, with the way that this can also run ROMs and patches and the community uh, firmware and everything, after this, I may try that out, but I wanted to get through this review knowing that the system was going to work from start to finish to be able to capture footage on it. And the footage actually did look really good. I looked at actually some of the pitfall footage just to make sure that it was being captured properly on my Hapog PVR60 Pro, and it looked really good. Um, the one thing, again, that I forgot initially is that I have to hit that 16 by nine button every time to go to four by three, which is the way that I prefer to play. Now, if you do have any other questions on this system here or anything modern or retro gaming in general, feel free to email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message on Twitter at rocksolidstudios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. Now, if you are looking to pick up a Retron 77, if you need spare controllers from Hyperkin, and they will work with original hardware, either the original joystick or the Ranger controller here, head on over to castlemaniagames.com. Ryan does stock Hyperkin products over there, and he has had these in the past. Now, the cool thing there is you earn what's called Castle Cash when you do order from Castlemania Games, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases. And the great thing, Castle Cash, it is just like cash. So if you've got 20 bucks in Castle Cash, you've got 20 bucks that you can spend at the castle. You can also use promo code ROCKSOLID10 to save 10% off of most items on the website. Uh, consoles are often excluded from that, but joysticks often or not, so you can use it on joysticks, cartridge cleaners, and the folks over at 1UP Cleaning Card have a new Atari 2600 system cleaner as well. And if you need to clean your cartridges, I have found that the Game Boy cleaners work exceptionally for cleaning the cartridges too. Would I recommend one of these? If you're really a fan of the Atari 2600, and if you wanna go through an HDMI port, this is about one of the only ways you can do it right now. The quality control has me somewhat concerned. Well, very concerned. Again, three systems to get one good working one. But this one so far, now that I've updated the firmware, seems to be working just fine. My name is Gary. This has been Rock Solid Productions and our look at the Hyperkin Retron 77. And if you're looking for information and more videos to check out, they're coming up right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rock Solid Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.